American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello, and welcome to the special edition of the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. We devote our entire program this time to something you can't live without, water. You probably think you pretty much know what there is to know about good old H2O, but stay tuned. You may be surprised at the many new ways that water is being put to use. Take everyday tap water and apply an electrical charge, and water takes on some entirely new properties. We'll see why the Minnesota Timberwolves of the NBA are using electrically charged water to clean their basketball court. We'll look at ionizer machines that some people are turning to as their main source for drinking water. We'll take you to the Andes Mountains of southern Ecuador to find the source of natural water that's said to have special qualities, a place where many live to be a hundred. All of this next on this special water edition of the American Health Journal. Although it's been used in Asia for more than 30 years, we're just beginning to hear about applications for ionized water in this country. So what is this altered form of water? We get an explanation from Jay Hare. I grew up thinking water was water was water. And I've always been a big water drinker. And uh, we're really creating a new paradigm for water. You know, you, you tell people we can produce a water that sterilizes. How, how is that? How can you create that? Um, we alter the water primarily in two ways at a, at a fundamental scientific level, and th those are both measurable. We alter the pH, we raise or lower that, and we can raise or lower the electrical properties in the water. And that creates a very um, powerful change in the water that we can demonstrate in a variety of ways. It's a tough thing to do to tell people that, you know, you can, you can kill a virus or a bacteria with just plain water. It's, uh, it's equally mind-bending to tell somebody that you can replace chemical surfactants and detergents. You can wash your clothes in, uh, in just plain high alkaline water, no chemicals. The process through which we create the alteration in the water begins with filtration. So first we clean the water up of contaminants, the vast majority of contaminants, but we allow the, the naturally occurring mineral content to pass through, and that's crucial. Um, after we clean the water up, it, it goes into what's known as a water cell, which contains a series of electrodes and membranes. The electrodes get charged with opposite charges, so you have a positively charged electrode separated by a membrane and then a negatively charged electrode. And everything in the water cell then happens through polarity and attraction. And so this is the process of what we call ionic separation. And so we literally separate the constituents in the water and then through that process the water takes on these different properties that we can measure, the altered pH and the different electrical properties. Jay Hare says there is growing interest in ionized water in the alternative medical community. There are some fundamental properties that the alternative community is looking at with this altered water. Um, it provides uh, a rich beneficial source of alkalizing minerals is, is one through the increased pH and condensing the alkaline minerals. Uh, it provides a very strong measurable antioxidant potential. Uh, it helps increase hydration through the microclustering effect um, and it helps uh, the increased hydration actually helps detoxify the cells at a cellular level from metabolic waste much more effectively. What we're seeing the, the forward thinking and more alternative minded uh, MDs and practitioners and naturopaths are starting to really take a hard look at this because it's, it's being brought into uh, the healing community by a grassroots movement of people who are drinking the water and getting results. You know, we're not here to dispense medical advice or, or make claims. Um, if you're sick, see your doctor and uh, if you think the water will help, give it a try and I'm pretty confident you'll, you'll know the results. When we come back, what is it about the water in this remote region of Ecuador? where many live to be a hundred. And a little later, the Minnesota company that's using electrically charged water to clean floors without chemicals. Stay with us.
Is there something special about the water in South Ecuador? Jay Hare went on a journey to find out. There are cultures around the world that have been studied because of their particular specific absence of chronic degenerative diseases and their propensity to live longer, healthier, vital, more vital lives. Um, some of those communities would be the Hunzas in Pakistan, the Vilcabombans in Ecuador, uh, the, the Georgians up in the, the former Soviet Union. Um, and when, the, when WHO funded some research around that, what they determined was that one of the consistent um, influences in those cultures was their, the fact that they had all been drinking higher pH alkaline waters. Because of the, the long-standing wisdom that there were these special waters around the world, but uh, we wanted to actually go down and, and document um, one of these that we had heard of in, in Ecuador. And so we had the good fortune last fall to travel down to the Andes Mountains to a small valley uh, in South Ecuador and actually not only test the water for uh, the natural, naturally occurring properties of alkalinity and, and low electrical energy, the alkalinity is coming up. It's the most unusual water ever. We got to actually interview uh, a couple of the what we called ancients, uh, a 105-year-old woman and a 108-year-old man and another 100-year-old woman. And so um, that was fascinating. Maria Luisa Medina, 105 years old. And she's very healthy. She has never been to the hospital. What we learned down there was kind of surprising. I came away personally feeling like we make health way too complex in the United States. The Vilcabombans are a community of people who live these healthy lifestyles because they're doing very, very simple things naturally without thinking about it. They're drinking great water, they're eating great food that's grown locally and fresh, they are living a lifestyle that doesn't have a lot of stress. And so we found that, that those simple secrets, we thought that was why these people live to be so old and so vital and so alive. If that water's so great, why, why can't we just bottle it and take it to the rest of the world? Uh, well, there are a couple of reasons. Some of those properties are not stable in the water, uh, particularly the electrical alteration. And so, um, while they are bottling the water in Vilcabamba, um, it's much more powerful to recreate those properties fresh, which is actually what our technology does. A an ionizer actually recreates the properties of the water that we found in Ecuador in the water that comes right from your tap. When we come back, some impressions from people who've been drinking ionized water. You're watching the American Health Journal, the show that brings you the latest information on prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and research from doctors right here in Southern California. Watch the American Health Journal each week on KOCE. With a home machine that attaches to the kitchen faucet, it's possible to make ionized water your source of drinking water. Jay Hare has used one for five years now. Well, I'm an athlete and hydration's always been important to me. Uh, I think as, a, as an athlete, um, you're always looking for ways to increase your performance, and I've tried everything. And the water was one of the few things that actually delivered an immediate and noticeable impact in, in my body. Um, because of the, the alkalizing effect, um, a, a base will neutralize an acid. When we exercise, we produce lactic acid. So, um, my muscle soreness dis decreased markedly. Um, my level of hydration increased at the same time so that for the first time in 15 years I wasn't constantly thirsty. And um, I think overall my recovery time and vis-a-vis -vis my performance improved, which, you know, probably in the order of 30 to 50 percent, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's hard to, hard to quantify exactly, but as, as an athlete, that's incredibly significant. Canadian Ross Anderson shares that passion for ionized alkaline water. He's been drinking it since the mid-90s. Quite immediately upon getting an ionizer, I noticed a dramatic shift in my hydration levels, um, my health levels, uh, my energy, my stamina 
clarity of mind. A number of things improved dramatically. Well, having been around the industry for five years and speaking to literally thousands of people who have drank the water, there's no question in my mind it produces results in the human body. No question. Um, and there is absolutely a tendency for people in that type of an environment with that type of product that produces very predictable and consistent results to overhype. Uh, as well as there's, you know, as there is in anything, there's skeptics out in the marketplace who want to debunk anything that, that's new and unproven, you know, through the typical double blind trials. And so, you know, we just say real simply, drink the water and let your, let your body be the judge. Check the shelves at your grocery store and you'll see that millions of people are turning to bottled waters these days. But Jay Hare is not among them. I think what the bottled water industry has done uh, over the last five years is, is um, sad. They've taken our, our tap water, for the most part, municipal tap water, and purified it so they've removed all of the naturally occurring minerals that's been in the water that mankind has been drinking since the dawn of time. They've turned it fairly acidic on the pH scale, then they've put it into number one PET plastic bottles that are filling up our landfills, and then they've sold it to us for more than the price of a gallon of gas. And people are buying it in, in record quantities because they're afraid of what's coming out of the tap. When we actually test the, the pH and electrical properties in bottled waters, uh, the results are not very favorable. Your local tap water if it were free of contaminants, is better on the acid alkaline scale than any of these bottled products. The purified bottled waters always tend to be acidic, so forces your body to deal with uh, more acidity. Um, and then they tend to have a very strong positive electrical charge, and then the theory goes the large molecular cluster size. So they're not very hydrating, um, they're actually acidic, and they you know, they have a, a, a very difficult time absorbing in the body. When we uh, do demonstrations, we test a lot of the popular beverages. And what we'll find, we test them for the metrics that we're looking at in the, in the altered water. We test them for pH, and we test them for the electrical properties. And some of the worst beverages out there test-wise are the sodas, which tend always to be between 3 pH and 4 pH. Uh, the sports drinks, which are in the same range of, of pH, um, and anything with carbonation or sugar in it basically tends to test very acidic and have a very uh, strong positive electrical charge, which makes it hard to absorb in the body. I think the future of, of ionized water is, is uh, limitless. Um, the commercial applications, uh, for anybody who looks at the science behind it, are innumerable. Um, the need for it in our society, especially here in the United States, um, is very great. And I think that what we'll see over the next couple of years is this technology become more and more mainstream, both in terms of commercial use and home residential use for drinking. And that's this special water edition of the American Health Journal. We're glad you could join us. Until next time, I'm Roger Cooper for the American Health Journal.